The holidays are a time when families gather quite often, but there's a chance you haven't visited with older family members in months. Changes in aging loved ones might be more visible, and could that signal memory loss issues? Well, here with more details from Windsor of Savoy, part of Carl Health, is Courtney Mann. Hi, Courtney. Hello. Thanks for having me. This is a time of year, just in general, where we're probably getting together with family we haven't seen in a while, and specifically with the pandemic, it might have been a little bit of extra time. Mm -hmm. What are some things we need to be looking for in our family members to see if perhaps they're struggling with something? Yeah, absolutely. So exactly with the pandemic, you know, we may not have seen um, individuals for a while. Um, with Alzheimer's and dementia, signs and symptoms are usually kind of subtle. Um, so since we haven't seen um, our loved ones for a while, it may be more noticeable. Um, so there are several things to look out for. Um, the number one um, thing that really we should look for is short-term memory loss. So for some people, what that means is, you know, they may be able to recall things that happened 30 years ago, um, but they have a harder time um, remembering things that happened today. So um, you may also notice that um, they have a harder time basically remembering more recent information. So if you have like a new baby in the family or there's a new significant other, they may struggle to remember their name or some of the details around that. Um, language is, is um, more difficult as well, um, whether it's kind of forgetting words or um, substituting in uh, more obscure words that maybe don't quite make sense. Um, participating in conversation, joining in a conversation can be difficult for them. So um, you, you may see that your loved one um, has withdrawn socially. Um, they may not be going to their normal social engagements, participating in their normal hobbies because that conversational piece is more difficult for them to manage. Um, you may find that someone with Alzheimer's or dementia is putting objects in strange places. You might find the keys in the freezer. Um, they just have a harder time um, backtracking their steps, you know, to where they put something. Let's say you start to notice some of those things. I, I think the question then is, what do I do? Is this too early to have a conversation? Am I, am I seeing things that really aren't there? How do you start navigating that uh, throughout the holidays and beyond? Yeah, well, it's, it's never too early to have the conversation. Um, they are difficult conversations, um, but they're ones that we need to have. Um, so if an individual is noticing that, that they have some of these signs and symptoms, um, then they should find someone that they trust to talk to. Um, but if you're noticing it in your loved one, then first you need to figure out who would be the best person to talk to them about that. Um, and then do it in a comfortable location um, and just be calm and um, you know respectful um, and empathetic in that conversation. Um, but really, that's important um, to get that conversation started so that you can um, get in touch with, with your uh, physician. Um, you want a medical provider that can do a full evaluation, that can help you determine if it is Alzheimer's or dementia, or if it's just another, um, you know, another medical condition that, that's treatable. There are, um, beyond just, it's not just being forgetful. <laughs> Alzheimer's is so much more than that, and I think that's what we immediately think of. But um, what are some of the other complications and things that go along with dementia or Alzheimer's that, that perhaps are, are more serious than just not remembering where we put the remote? Yeah, so it can be struggling with um, familiar tasks. You may find that, like, creating a grocery list is harder to do. Um, following a familiar recipe, you know, following the steps of the recipe is more difficult. So really just kind of those day-to-day -day tasks. Um, you may see that they are not keeping up on their, their hygiene um, or their appearance as more as, you know, as much as they used to, or um, they're wearing seasonally inappropriate clothing, you know, inappropriate for the weather. Yeah. So really just managing those daily, those daily tasks and daily needs. You're really speaking to me here um, because we just lost my dad five years ago last Friday. So this is all just kind of like flooding me right now because everything you're talking about were things that we were noticing mm -hmm. with the um, lack of socializing with my dad and my granddad, both who sure. had Alzheimer's. And it's like they were no longer active participants in conversations who right. were usually the big storytellers in the family or the misplacing things, putting things where you didn't. Mm -hmm. You couldn't find them. Like, they were right there before. Now, where are they? And you don't want to think about Alzheimer's or dementia, really, at any time, but especially not at the holidays. Yeah. But 
like you mentioned, it's so important to have these conversations so that you can come up with a plan. Because if you don't plan, <laughs> then Absolutely. you're just going to be even more frustrated. You're in crisis mode. Yes. Yeah. And that there's no time for crisis mode in Alzheimer's mm -hmm. because it's overwhelming as it yeah. is. So it's nice that we have resources mm -hmm. um, like you all. So if people are having questions and they want to have these conversations and they've got the plan started, mm -hmm. how do you all come in and help? So in early 2022, the Windsor of Savoy is opening our own memory care suites. So we will have nine private apartments within our existing assisted living community um, with trained staff to help um, individuals with cognitive impairments. Um, this is great for residents that are currently in the community and are independent or assisted living because they can age in place longer um, and stay within the community. Um, and Windsor of Savoy has been owned by Carl Hospital since we opened um, 33 years ago. Um, so we have the um, advantage of having Carl providers right there with us um, and uh, just to add to that continuum of care. Well, yeah. I would imagine this conversation is going to come in in incredibly helpful for a lot of people this uh, this holiday season and uh, thank you for sharing that information with us. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. We'll get you more details about the Windsor of Savoy including a link to their Facebook page and website which you see right there on your screen at CILiving.tv. We do appreciate Aunt Martha's for sponsoring today's segment.